Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Pageless Library. I'm Ryan Knight, and I'm joined, as always, by my brother, Bo Knight. And today, we are going to talk about A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms for our audiobook. It's the Knight, the Knight of the Seven Kingdoms is written by George R.R. R. Martin, which I'm sure you guys all know who he's famous for, the Game of Thrones and the show and the, the books and he actually has quite a bit of other stuff that I would say is also pretty good. George, who? Yeah, right. So this book, A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, takes place uh, before the events of Game of Thrones. If you're familiar with that whole right. place. It, yeah, so it's like in the same place, but it's a whole different time it's, period. Right. It's still in Westeros, and you're still going to hear some stuff that uh, – like things you recognize in this book from the Game of Thrones series. And it's narrated before we get too far. Yes, yeah, it's narrated by Harry Lloyd. And we listen to it on Audible, as always. That's <laughs> pretty much, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I know they're not a sponsor, but seriously, if you're serious about audiobooks, you, you have to have Audible. Yeah, just do yourself a favor and just get Audible. Don't, don't torrent this stuff. Don't. Don't listen to it on like random YouTube channels and stuff. Just do yourself a favor and get Audible and start listening to audiobooks the correct way. And it's if you were to buy it right now, it, it's twenty eight dollars. Wow, yeah, that's a lot. And it's about what, like eight and a half hours long? Uh yeah, I yeah, eight and a half hours, I'm pretty sure is what it is. All right. So yeah, so this is it's obviously it's like a it's a it's a fantasy novel about a knight. And so instead of like Game of Thrones where Game of Thrones is really big scope, this is really small scope where you follow a knight named Duncan and like his adventures and scrapes and stuff that he gets into and it's all from his perspective. It's all first person. Yeah, which I was not expecting. Me neither. Um, coming from a Game of Thrones to this. So <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. So, and, oh, go ahead, Ryan. I was just, I was just gonna throw out uh, that one. I was not expecting that for this. I, I was kind of coming off of Game of Thrones and expecting something very similar. And this, it is, but it is not. It is definitely a change of tone from Game of Thrones. And you know what? I like it a lot, actually. Yeah, I, I do as well, actually. I think the voice acting is really, really good. And I think the writing and the storytelling are like, they're like Game of Thrones level, but on a small scope. And it's really, yeah. it's really well done. Yeah, which George R.R. R. Martin, I mean, people are calling him, you know, the J.R.R. R. Tolkien of our time. So like, that's, <laughs> that is huge praise because obviously Tolkien, Tolkien is the king of fantasy novels. Oh yeah, yeah, he's still the king. But... He he sits up back the sits on the bow rug. <laughs> well, if that's true, then George R. R. Martin does sit on a dragon at least. He sits because... on the Iron Throne. Okay, there you go. You got me on that one. Because he's good. I mean, he he's good. And he I would say, good. I think this though, this for me was a bit easier than like Game of Thrones is. Yeah, um, it is definitely easy listening. I, I would say, to not yeah. get lost. Yeah, so, and one of the reasons that is is because I feel like they there is a lot of names, but it's not nearly as many as you get in Game of Thrones so quickly. I don't know if we mentioned this yet, but this is actually, so they're like short stories. They're not, it's not like one continuous event. In this <laughs> book, there are three separate stories that are that happen. They happen in chronological order, but there are skips in between where you don't really know exactly what happened. Yeah, that's true. There, yeah, it's like, like you said, it's one one book but broken down into kind of three separate parts. 
I mean, each story is linked, and they are they are continuing the storyline with each story, but yeah. they're all separate. And you could almost listen to them like you could listen to one and then take a break and come back, and you would you you would remember what happens because Dunk repeats himself. About, yeah, like, he, he reminds you of events. Right, and it almost feels like maybe that was Martin's original plan was to break it down into three separate books or something because yeah he does go back and talk about like what just happened in the last book um for for quite a bit like he fills you in on what all happened to him um right off the bat in the next story and i also have to say this book has quite a few like twists and turns that i didn't see coming the first time i listened to it at all yeah yeah they did a yeah and it's it's a little different listening to it the second time around i listened to it again for the podcast just to refresh myself and it is it's a different listen the second time around for sure just because yeah, you know it, it, you know a little bit more of that stuff obviously what's going to happen so i think this brings us to our overall recommendation i'll let you go first ryan uh yeah this one's a this one's a two thumbs up from me i will give it that because especially because i i liked it a lot the first time i listened to it i i listened to it shortly after it came out which was in like 2015 and uh well i think it was probably more recently than that 2016 i'll say um but i had forgotten a lot of what happened in the story the second time i listened to it so it was it was refreshing a second time around which i thought was really good yeah i i have to give this two thumbs up as well i think this is this is a really good like fiction like uh like swords and shields kind of fiction book yeah and i really love the like the close-up on on like one night and you see like what just a night has to go through each day because like in game of thrones it's like huge battles all not not all the time but they they do do like a little stuff where they they like zoom in on two characters but it's you see mostly wealthy people and you don't really know what it's like to be the commons right and also in game of thrones you're you're constantly jumping from like we're up in the north, now we're down in the south, now we're over here, now we're over here. Whereas this well, is nice being zoomed in on one person and you're just following him kind of around Westeros. Well, and I like too that like, because in this world there's no Facebook, so like the the freaking information that gets passed around is like, it's like gets really warped by the time it gets to certain people and like nobody really knows what's true and what isn't when they're yeah. talking about people. And I, I really like that aspect of of this and like i think dunk does a good job about like talking about stuff like that yeah yeah i thought i thought they did a very good job so yeah so highly a, recommended that is a highly recommended from both of us that's four thumbs up right there yeah <laughs> out of five <laughs> thumbs out of five don't don't know where the fifth one came from yeah so it's i would it. say now if you want to listen to it go go listen to it i think you should come into this fresh as, as we i feel like i say this every time that's just who I am as a as a person. I feel like you should come into media without really knowing a ton about it. And if if you've been interested so far, I'd say stop listening to the podcast, go listen to the Night of the Seven Kingdoms, and then you got to come back to the podcast. You can't yeah. not come back though, because that's just rude. Yeah, definitely come back. Drop us a drop us a like and a thumbs up or <laughs> and whatever. Hate mail. Give, come on, somebody <laughs> send me some hate mail, please. Yeah. We still got no emails yet, so whoever sends it's gonna be the first one, good or bad. It'll be the first one. Oh, and I'm gonna read it. I don't care what it says. <laughs> That's actually not a bad idea. Yeah, we might we might do that for the whenever it shows up. We'll uh, we'll let everybody know that we're gonna we got an email. All right. So spoilers are off. Yeah. So this is the spoiler wall. So yeah, like Bo said, go listen to it if you're interested, and then come back and listen to what we have to say about it. Okay, I want to talk about the beginning of this book because I love how it literally picks up the second Dunk becomes a real knight. Yeah, and uh, very, very good opening, in my opinion. So in, in yeah, in the beginning, his his what do you what do you call that like when he's he's like his liege lord or whatever he's his he's his squire anyway. So he's like a knight in training basically, and he just gets sick and dies, and so Dunk just. He's and he's a hedge knight, so he doesn't really have good arms and armor. A hedge knight like goes to tournaments and tries to compete and, and gain a little money. If you've ever seen the movie A Knight's Tale, it's kind of like that, yeah, like what that yeah. guy does. Yeah. And so and then they like they just fight for whoever. So they're kind of mercenaries. So they don't. Yeah, it's the way. Yeah, they sleep in the hedges. That's why they're called hedge knights. 
And so Doug yeah, kind of takes over Arlen's position. And, yeah, it picks up from there. Yeah, because Arlen, uh, shortly before Arlen dies, he he knights Duncan. And, yeah, and, uh, and any knight can make a knight. Right. Which is, <laughs> we'll talk about it a little later, but I think that's kind of a, it is, I mean, it's not weird, but it gets to be very weird as the story progresses, you'll see. Um, just with, like, he shows up, you know, and he's like, I am a knight. And they're like, oh, yeah, who made you knight? And he's like, Arlen of Penny Tree. And they're like, who's that? Like, <laughs> well, uh, well, I want to talk about first when he, like, lists off the equipment he has. I like, I really like that part when he's like, oh, I have armor but it's too small for me because dunk is like this huge massive guy right yeah i feel like you got to explain that too he's like this huge way bigger than everybody i don't know if he's quite like the mountain size but he's huge he's a big he's a big person they they say it a few times but they don't like they don't ever come out and say it but he, they say something about him being i guess he's probably around like six three six no, four dude. And the one part he says he's three inches short of seven feet. Is that what it is? Okay, yeah. no, I think you're right. Yeah, that's yeah, so like massive huge. though. Almost yeah. seven feet tall is like that's. Well, that's and everybody else is like anything. five feet tall. Like a big man is like five five. Right. So he's huge. Yeah. So none of Arlen's stuff fits him, and he has like two horses that are like in decent shape, and like one war horse. Thunder. I I just love that he like lists off all this stuff and, and I don't know it just gives me that feeling of like okay I have two pennies and a quarter so I can get an ice cream cone. Yeah, and and he's also it's even more distressing than that because like you said he's like well I have a helmet it doesn't fit me I have a uh, whatever gorget and uh, armor breastplate it doesn't fit me so I could try and sell it like. <laughs> yeah, I had this. It's, so it's, yeah. Uh, the, Right off the bat, it feels like Duncan is just like hopeless already. Well, and I think you you need to mention that Duncan isn't very bright. Yeah. And, um, I mean, in, in the whole book, he's like it's like him talking to himself, and he when he does something stupid, he he always says "dunk the lunk thick as a castle wall." Yeah, because that's what Arlen used to tell him. But but I mean, he's not a total bumbling idiot. Is the thing he's not incompetent. He just has a lot of honor. But what? George, what George R. R. Martin nailed in this that I have to, uh, I got to go back to an other book we did, the um, uh, Monster Hunter International. So the main character in that described very similarly to Duncan, but the main character in that was supposed to be incredibly smart. Most of the time, he was kind of dumb in Monster Hunter. In this. They describe him as dumb. He's not dumb, but he also isn't like constantly doing super smart things. Like George R. R. Martin did a very good job of sticking to the character that he laid out for Duncan, in my opinion. Well, that, that and and like he he'll he'll say something that's going on in front of you, but like Dunk isn't putting the pieces together in his head yet. Right. Right. Yep. And oh yeah, we gotta mention that he he like has been trained how to fight, but he like doesn't really know that well. Like obviously, Sir Arlen wasn't actually like a really good fighter, <laughs> so Dunk really doesn't know what he's doing, and he yeah, has no and, other choice what but other than to continue because that's all he knows. Yeah, and now he's kind of just like, well, I need some money and I need somewhere to stay, so he decides to go to like the closest tournament that there is close to him. Well, that's where him and Arlen were going. That's right. That's right. They were headed to the tournament that's right yeah and then he so he goes and he's like oh i'm, I'm hungry i'm gonna go get some food at this inn and he like meets this state this stable boy and he like tells him he's like yeah freaking feed my horses do all this stuff because he's you know he's a big man now he's he's a sir so yeah that's right he's a sir yeah mm -hmm. he's he's sir duncan the tall because well not yet not yet i thought that's what he i thought that's what he tells the kid because the kid's like who are you and he has to come up with oh you're name. right you're yeah. right. It is right there. Yeah, he's got to come up with a name because he already – he just became a knight. So he doesn't know – because most of the knights in these stories would be like – they'd be like Sir Roderick of Blackstone. Like normally they're named from the place that they like serve. But 
then they, they have the nicknames like the La- like the Laughing Storm and the Gray Lion and stuff like that. Like if you're yeah. if you're really renowned, you would be like, I am the Laughing Storm from House Baratheon. Yeah, you'd have like that's this... like how you would talk to people. That's just Game yeah. of Thrones speak. Exactly. So, but Duncan doesn't have a name, and he doesn't no, have a, a place lineage. where he. Yeah, yeah he. He's a he was a, yeah, and he was an orphan, so he he has nowhere that he like calls home. So he has to come up with something on the spot, and yeah, he he decides that he's Sir Duncan the Tall, which is fitting because he's tall as shit. Because he's super tall, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and so he goes into that inn, and there's this this clearly a nobleman guy. One thing I love about these books, actually, is you can tell a lot about a person by what they're wearing. Yeah, and they constantly point. Yeah, they do a good job of pointing that out. And especially like with the knights, he's like, oh, he has amazing armor with this and this sigils on it, and you can just tell how much money they have. Right. Yeah, so he sees like a nobleman and really nice stuff, and he's just passed out in the, in a cup of wine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, sorry about that. That's okay. So, anyways, yeah, Duncan, uh, he sees this noble passed out in the bar, and he gets himself some food with a little bit of money he's got, and uh, then he goes back out to the stable because he's gonna, I, he was gonna take care of his horse or something, and because well, uh, there was no room to stay at the inn, so he's leaving. Oh, that's right, that's right, yeah. And uh, that kid that was the stable boy is like sitting on his war horse, like with his armor on. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah he's got the he's got the chainmail or whatever on. That's right. Yeah, Duncan Duncan gets all pissed off at the kid. Obviously, I'll give you a clout in the ear. Yeah, <laughs> I knew it would come up. Yeah, I'll give you a clout in the ear. <laughs> so yeah, then Duncan collects all his stuff and he kind of heads off to the tournament. And he tries to register right, but like nobody knows who he is. So he can't. Yeah. Somebody has to vouch for him that he's a knight. Yeah, it goes back to kind of what I was saying at the beginning is like, yeah, he's a knight because another knight made him, but nobody knows who that other knight was. So right. now he has to have someone vouch for him. So he's like, oh, I'll go talk to so and so. They, you know, Sir Arlen fought for them in whatever. And he goes and talks to this person. The guy's like, I have no idea who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of pathetic. Like you know, it like it feel, hurt doesn't my he feelings. show him Arlen's sigil too? And he's like, I've never seen that before. Yeah, the guy's like, I have no idea. And then Duncan's like, No, he, you know, he was wounded for you at the fight of whatever. And the guy's just literally like, I, you know, get out of here. I don't have time for this. Uh, yeah, and one thing you got to understand about Duncan is like he has a lot of honor and. Like every, he expects people to kind of return the favor. I feel like a lot of the time, and they don't. Yeah, and he does have. He almost has so much honor, like to a fault. Like, yeah. even if he has to like incriminate himself, he'll do it just to stay honor bound. Yeah. Which, before we get any further, I just want to throw this out there that if anyone has listened to Game of Thrones or read it or even seen the show, and not this. Duncan is mentioned one time in the show. I do know that. Wait, is he seriously mentioned? Yes. So what do they say about him? So it's when uh, I want to say it's when Joffrey is talking to Jamie because Jamie is going to become a Kingsguard, mm-hmm. and he said he opens this book about all the knights that were written about that were Kingsguard, and he says, "Oh, are you going to end up being like Sir Duncan the Tall?" So he does mention him in the other stories. Dude, that's ins- that dude. That's crazy because doesn't the one guy mention that he's like, I dreamed of you and I dreamed of you as a Kingsguard. Yes. Yeah. So that's crazy, dude. And there hasn't been any more of these done yet, but no, there's hoping- one. There's another one. There is. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Oh my gosh. See, I didn't even know that. I'm getting way off track now. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> So how does I don't even remember how Duncan gets vouched for. He, oh, how does he do it? Wait, does he even get vouched for, or does he get in the fight next? No, That's the first he, story, right? Yeah, but he doesn't get in the fight until a little bit later. No, I think he goes back to like his camp that he set up because he's all dejected and freaking the the kid at the stables is Stable. there. Yeah, the stable boys there. That's and he I, like he, did he like set up his camp right like 
he he like unpacked everything and he like cleaned up his armor and stuff like that for him and yeah, like yeah. and he like he like did he like watered the horses so basically he did what a squire is supposed to do right yeah and, and, the, and the kid's name something. is egg yeah that's all we know him as right now is egg and he's he's shaved like completely bald yeah and then i think shortly after because there's like this puppet show that's going on that he talks about a lot because there's this really cute girl that dunk likes yeah yeah she's the one running the puppet show she's uh she's also very tall so he likes yeah because she says she's uh i can't remember her name but she calls herself whatever her name is too tall and he says not too tall for me yeah because he's fucking giant yeah (laughs) yeah because he's too tall for everybody else and then, and then, so yeah. One night when they're watching that puppet show, one of these noblemen like tries to rape the girl, and Dunk like just he doesn't even know what he's doing. He just steps in and freaking punches the guy, and like obviously he punches the shit out of him because Dunk is super strong. Yeah, and, and then yeah, and then he finds is... out it's like the king's. It's like it's like one of the Targaryens who who are in power right now. So it's basically the people who have all the power. Yeah, so it's like the king's brother's son or something like that. Like. It's that that's the one thing I'll say about these is the the lineage gets very difficult. Oh, to I can't keep the Targaryen straight at all. No, because there's so many try. of them. Yeah, there's so many. So but this kid that he that he punches out is a Targaryen. So like Bo said, this is this is the current royal family like and he is. So he has the blood of the dragon in him. And yeah, and so then. They want to obviously try Dunk for this, and in this world, by try people, that means fight to the death. And so he demands like this: the the prince that got punched demands this like weird trial of the seven. So it's seven knights on seven knights. And so Dunk, who knows nobody, has to get seven knights to help him fight to the death. Yeah, yeah. It's not like a trial by combat, like one on one. It's seven seven versus seven. seven. Yeah. So it's it's seven of whoever follows that prince and seven of whoever will follow dunk and yeah, then and they all fight to the death yeah so and, and dunk doesn't even have armor he doesn't have shit yeah <laughs> that's right see and this this does happen right before he gets vouched for right yeah that's that's what i was thinking is that this goes down before anyone can even vouch for him anyways well, and then like a, a string of events happen where people want to join dunk's side because he was he did the noble thing in the thing and so 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 the girl from the puppet show like paints his shield because he has to have his own sigil he can't use sir arlen's that's right yeah so his shield has to be painted and then one of the armor smiths like makes him a really good set of armor for free not for free he has to pay like a copper which is like nothing he pays like some money he also gives the guy like the armor that he already had Right. So the guy's like, well, yeah, I might be able to do something with this. And he, able, he's able to like melt it down and, and remake Duncan some armor of his own. And, and Dunk, then, Dunk. so Dunk actually gets, assembles quite a, like a team of really formidable knights. Yeah. Most notably is the, the prince who he punched out. Uh, that kid's father. Well, he shows up like at the end because Dunk has. With including Dunk, he has six knights, and he like makes a plea to the crowd. He's like, "I have to have somebody else, or or I just lose." And well, the, that 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 guy shows up and helps them. One of the Targaryens does. Yeah. So who it is is it's yeah his like his freaking ringer is the the Targaryen who he punched out that kid's uncle, right? Mm-hmm. I'm pretty he sure he was like next is. in line to be king. Yeah, and so it's uh it's Baylor Breakspear. Yeah, That's it is Baylor Breakspear, who you hear about even in in Game of Thrones. In Game of Thrones, right? And um the Targaryen that he punched out, uh his dad, so Baylor's brother is fighting against Duncan's team also. Right, and yeah, and so yeah, like Duncan has a, a a force of like actually really formidable and well known knights to help him. But yeah, he the gets- catch is. Dunk is shitty at jousting. He's like garbage. Yeah, so they have to go with Baylor's plan because the way this fight is going to go down is they all start, all 14 of them start on their horses. They essentially do a charge into each other, and then it's just on. It's just a fight. Yeah. To the death. To the death. Unless there are stipulations that if 
one side or the other. So because Duncan is the accused and because the Targaryen is the accuser, if one of them, either if Duncan says, yes, I'm guilty, or if the Targaryen retracts his claim, the fight's over. Yeah, and so they so the, yeah, so they they follow Baylor's plan of using the tournament lances because they're longer. Yeah, they're like uh, four feet longer, even though they're right. not they're blunted, they're not deadly, and the other right, guys but they're are also using, easy they're easier to aim because they're not as heavy. Right. The other guys are using like war lances that are he like goes into great detail about how sharp they are spiked at the end and, and how I deadly really they appreciate look. that he talks about the arms and armor a lot because I feel like it, it really would matter in these situations. Yeah, for sure, and it's it's kind of cool that he points that out that they're going to use tournament lances because they're longer than the war lances. Well, and it comes back up later, which is cool too. Yes, yes, it is. So yeah, the the fight starts right, and like Dunk doesn't Dunk get like unhorsed almost immediately. Oh yeah, he immediately gets like wrecked. Oh, I think he gets he gets like fucked up all in his ribs, right? Like he gets stabbed immediately. Yeah, because I think this the the war lance he hits the dude he's going for. But the dude hits him with the war lance, and it goes through his shield and hits him, like, in the shoulder because it's so sharp. Yeah, that's right. And it knocks him off his horse immediately. And then the, the other guy gets off, like, to taunt him, right? And Dunk just, like, grabs his legs because Dunk is so freaking strong and just pulls yeah. him down into the ground with him. Yeah, which that's the Targaryen that he that yeah. is accusing him of this stuff. So that Targaryen was trying to walk over there and just kill Duncan, like, immediately. Yeah, but, but it, it looked like Dunk was incapacitated, but Dunk just, yeah. like, overpowers him because he's so strong. Yeah, he, like, pulls him to the ground and just starts beating the shit, shit out, of him. out of him. Yeah, he just, yeah. Like, he, like, punches his helmet in. See, and that was Duncan's plan was to try to end it as fast as possible, yeah. but he doesn't want to kill the kid. He doesn't yeah. want to kill him. He just, he's, every time he hits him, he's, like, telling him to yield. Yeah, he's like, yield, yield, every time he's punching him. Yeah, because... Also, Duncan is, like, getting flashes of all the other stuff happening around yeah. him. He, there's fighting going on all around him. Right. <clears throat> Which I also had an appreciation for. Uh, Baylor Breakspear played a little dirty because two of the fighters on the other Targaryens team are Kingsguard, and they are not allowed to harm someone of the royal family. Therefore, they cannot fight him. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it, at this point in the book, though, you you get the feeling that all the Targaryens are against Dunk because they have like a little meeting beforehand. Well, but the other guy is not the other guy who we because well we we did find this out already. We kind of skipped something. Is that Egg is yeah Aeg, his squire? Yeah, Duncan's squire is Aegon Targaryen. He's also a Targaryen in disguise, right? And his brother, right, was the one at the inn passed out. Yeah, it's it's the one so, that Dunk punched. Well, the one that was passed out at the bar, that's not the one Dunk punched oh, out. Oh, no, you're right. He punched the other one. You're right. But but that one that was passed out at the bar, we're probably making this more confusing because we don't know their names. Yeah. But, <laughs> but anyways, the one who was passed out at the bar is also fighting for the Targaryen that Dunk punched out. But he's like, he literally is like, don't worry, I'm just going to fall off my horse and I won't get back up. <laughs> well, and he's like known for not being a very good fighter. Yeah. So, and he stays true to his word. He literally just like gets hit and he falls mm -hmm. off his horse and lays, he just in, the lays mud. in the mud. <laughs> I thought that was funny. So, so yeah, Dun I think Dunk passes out for a minute right after this battle. And then he like wakes up and Egg is Egg is with him and like all most of the fighters that were in the fight are, are there with him and they're t and they're telling him about like, you know, cuz a couple a couple of the guys on his team died. Yeah, on both the, sides. So, and the, yeah, on both sides. But Bra Baylor Breakspear comes up, and his helmet's all dented in weird. And he he's like talking to Dunk, and he's like, "You have to be my man." And Dunk's like, "I swear for my life, I will I will fight for you, sir." And then he takes they take off his helmet, and his freaking brain is exposed. Yeah, and he just yeah, dies. Pretty jacked up. He dies like right there on the spot. So in the beginning of the book, freaking a, a Targaryen died to save Dunk, who is like this random hedge knight that nobody knows. Yep. Yeah, and the the killing blow that was done to Baylor was by his brother on the other right. team with his like uh, with his mace, and so it sparks all this controversy because now a Targaryen killed another Targaryen, 
over this hedge knight, basically. Right. But so Egg, Egg has bonded so much with Duncan that he insists that he wants to be Duncan's squire. Yeah, and Egg... <laughs> I probably should look all these names up because Aegon is also the the brother of the kid that Duncan punched out. They're brothers. Right. So, but he's bonded a lot with Egg, and he thought, and before before you know he's a prince, he thought Egg was just some poor kid. Yeah, and he talks. But, to but him, then like, he knows a ton about the knights, though. Yeah, and and uh, Duncan can't quite put two and two together. That yeah, because Duncan's you know, too stupid. He doesn't right. even think about it. He just thinks about it. He's like, oh, Egg is full of good information. Yeah. <laughs> and but the Targaryens want Dunk to serve with them they're like you don't need to be a hedge knight anymore but dunk's like no i am a hedge knight that's all i know i have to keep doing this yeah except that's the it. one dude who killed baylor he's pissed he's like he basically well, it's like he makes it sound like it's duncan's fault that he killed his own brother <laughs> well that and he asks him to serve for him and he's like no i already saw i already swore my sword to baylor yeah like i can't do that but then baylor is dead so therefore he so to, it, it basically uh, becomes he's swearing his sword to Egg, kind of. Yeah, and even though Egg's like continues to be a squire, it's kind of a weird. Right, thing. and so that's where the first story ends. Yeah, it's actually not super long. It's about three hours, maybe. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of stuff happens in the first very first little thing, and it's. We we didn't do it any justice because again no. we can't I can't keep the names straight I I think George R R Martin does an amazing job coming up with names I just can't remember them all off the top of my head <laughs> and he, he's really consistent too yeah that's for sure and so <laughs> then it then it cuts ahead in the timeline and it's been a couple like they've been to, together for like a year right Egg and and Duncan something like that yeah close to a year. And so that they're in service of like this really low level lord who has like one other knight. <laughs> the, the brown shield guy. Yeah. Who like oh, who smells fucking terrible, I guess. And he's like an asshole. Yeah. He really is too, and you learn that like right away when they run into him on the bridge. And Dunk doesn't like serving with him. They, uh, yeah, they immediately, like, kind of butt heads. But the thing about that dude is um, the uh, Knight of the Brown Shield is he's also a hedge knight. And the way they talk about him, he's, like, a piece of shit. But he's also a very capable piece of shit. Yeah, no, he's, like, a really good fighter. Yeah, like, to the point where Duncan is almost scared to tangle with him. Because he talks yeah. about it several times. He's like, I oh, just wish I could, like, you know, knock him out. But then he, like... He always sees like that dude sharpening his sword, and he kind of talks about how it, you know, kind of freaks him out a little bit. Well, and Dunk is really good at sword fighting. Yeah, which, so that says a lot that he's kind of scared of this dude, basically. And so the whole uh, conflict in this story is like that the the guy he's serving for, like the I can't read something like the, the patchwork lion or something like that. His water is getting stolen from him. Yeah, the checky lion. The checky lion. That's right. I, I couldn't remember I just, what they call it. I. You know what's funny is because the first time I listened to this, I didn't put two and two together that it's a checkerboard colors behind yeah. his line, <laughs> which is sad. <laughs> I didn't think about it either, to be honest. I didn't. I, just, I thought checky was like a type of line. That's kind of what I was thinking. And then I was like, well, that's really weird. But then, yeah, I listened to it this time and I was like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's It's a checkerboard pattern of, I think, Green and white or something like that. So Dunk and this brown knight, they go up the river to see what's going on, like why they have no water. And there's like a crew of dudes building a dam. And the brown knight like just punches one of them in the face, right? <laughs> he, uh, they're building a dam, yeah, blocking up the water that goes to the Checky Lion's uh, little tiny kingdom he's got. And uh, the brown dude, he pulls his sword and he's like telling them all to leave. And they're like, no, we don't have to leave. We're here under orders of the spider, whatever the girl's name is. And uh, that brown dude freaking cuts the one dude's face. With his oh, sword. yeah, that's right. Yeah, like kind of messed up. <laughs> and then I think they, don't, they, don't, they send like an ultimatum to 
freaking the checky lion guy. They're like, give us the brown guy, or or we're gonna freaking we're gonna attack you. I'm gonna do the uh, I'll do the the Bill Burr thing, and I'm looking up stuff right now as we as we talk, just so that That's I can. Fine. I, that this way I'll have some names to put to it. So the Checky Lion is uh, Eustace Osgray. That's that's who. That's Eustace. And then the uh, Bennis the Brown is the other knight. And uh, Lady Weber is going to be. Those are going to be the main names, kind of, of this story. Right. And so Dunk. This is like Dunk's first. It feels like a first attempt at like talking a way out of a out of a situation instead of like fighting his way out yeah it's actually yeah it's a i like this story i think i i think this is pretty good i the last one's really good too though the last one's really really good yeah and they're all uh yeah so he goes and talks to after they see those guys at the dam and those guys get he you know uh sir bennis freaking cuts the one dude those guys leave and they go back to uh lady weber and uh, Lady Weber is known as the – she's like the spider. And they talk about always how she has – she had four husbands and she killed them all. And, like, they just paint her out to be this horrendous person, basically. And uh, Eustace – that's right, because Bennis always calls him Sir Useless. Mm-hmm. And uh, so Eustace – basically tells Duncan, he's like, well, we need our water. He's like, can you please go tell them, you know, tell her I'll, uh, I'll pay for the freaking the dude who Ben is cut. Right. He's going to pay the blood price. Yeah. So he said, tell, tell her that. And I need my water. Yeah. So Dunk has to like go and talk to this lady and he's like scared. Cause he's, he goes with, it's just him and egg. He goes by himself. Yeah, because uh, Bennis refuses to go because he knows he'll be in trouble if he goes. Right. Yeah, so Dunk goes with with Egg, and and it, like he goes to like a it's not like a super nice castle, but it's way nicer than what the Checky Lion has. Yeah, it's cold moat. And there's a and there's a lot of soldiers there. Yeah, that's like one of the first things he notices is is not only is there a lot more soldiers, but they're like they're relatively well outfitted yeah and i i feel like I, we talked about this a lot but this, this is one thing this book really emphasizes is like equipment and how much it matters in in combat yeah big time and then because we'll we'll learn about that here in just a minute after duncan gets back to sir eustace right but he shows up and this lady he expects this like he expects her to be like ugly and fat and old but she's like beautiful and young and he's like taken aback oh yeah huge boner yeah so, just <laughs> just just right away. Well, that's after he gets tricked by her sister and the yeah. other dude, <laughs> which is kind of a funny little. I thought I liked it. I thought it was kind of funny. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Yeah, but so then she shows him that she has rights to the water, and the Checky Lion doesn't at all. Which Duncan cannot read the map. He has right. To he egg can't read. He has egg. Has to, he has to egg. Has to read it because Duncan and doesn't I, know how to read. I love how he does it, how she like hands him the map and he's like looking at it and he's like acting like he can read it. And he's like, egg, come here. I don't know this one word. <laughs> and egg comes over and he's like, what does it say? <laughs> you know, Dunk is really endearing because he can't do everything and he's really truthful about that. And he uses egg pretty well. Yeah, yeah, that's that is that is true. I, and I think their their relationship is actually really intricate and kind of it's it's good because I mean Dunk wants him to be a good knight when he grows up, so he's kind of hard on him, and so Egg knows that. Yeah, he's like a tough but loving father to Egg. Yeah, he always clouts him on the ear. <laughs> yeah, it's whenever Egg does anything wrong, he'll say that you want to clout on the ear. He yeah. says that all the time. <laughs> I'm gonna clout you so hard on the ear, you're not gonna wake up tomorrow. <laughs> So, so yeah, then Duncan goes back like all dejected because he couldn't complete his task. And then, but then he's kind of finding out that maybe he's serving for the wrong reasons. Like he's in the wrong here, and he's serving for like a, like a not a very good lord. Well, and so, uh, um, Lady Weber, basically, because Duncan's telling telling her, he's like, look, Sir Eustace needs the water, you know. He's telling her all these things about Eustace because he. This is what Eustace has told him, and 
he thinks Eustace is like a good lord. But she starts being like, look, no, he's not telling you the truth. Like, yeah. he's kind of lying about a lot of this stuff. She says, it's my water. You know, look at this. The only reason he even has his castle is because he was a traitor and they let him live, basically. Yeah. Right. Oh, well, I guess we, for, we forgot to talk about there was like a rebellion in, in between the Targaryens and there was a black dragon and a red dragon. It was a the civil red... war. Right. Yeah. Think of, yeah. Think about it like a civil war. So the whole realm yeah. fought against each other. And so, yeah, the red dragon won. And so all these people who are with the black dragon are now traitors. And obviously yeah. Dunk doesn't like them because he's with the Targaryens now. And he didn't know because all the stories that Eustace told him was just that I fought for the king. That's all he right. kept saying. And, he never, yeah, and, he never said that he fought for the losing side. <laughs> right. Yeah, and Dunk just assumes it's the king now. Right. He just assumes that yeah, he means the red dragon, or that's what he always says. He says, "I my sons died for the dragon, or whatever." Yeah. So Duncan assumes it was for the red dragon. Yeah, but then Dunk comes back and like confronts him about it all, right? Like he's like, "You, you were a traitor." Yeah, and that dude gets pissed. Yeah, he like wants Dunk out of his castle immediately. Yeah, but in the meantime, Duncan and Sir Benis had basically rounded up all the villagers. Oh yeah, and they're and, like making a little militia. Yeah, they're making this militia, and this is where we really find out like how much difference the um, the equipment makes because like Duncan's literally like some of these guys are kind of getting the training, but he's like. You know, look at us. We have sharpened sticks and and wooden shields. Like, you know, they're not banded with iron. No, nothing. There's no way we can beat them. Yeah. Yeah. Because basically, it, it, he basically just says, like, we have, you know, whatever. Say, say we have 25 guys. But he's like, they could ride in here with five well-armed people and wipe us out. Easy. Yeah. Because I mean, I, this and a knight's tail, I think, does a good job of this. Like, if you're wearing heavy armor, you're not going to be able to hurt somebody with a, a pointed stick. Yeah, exactly. It's just going to break. Yep. So they like doesn't the forest catches on fire, right? Yep. The for so and that's what Lady Weber had said. She said we're coming because she wants Sir Benis. Because Benis hurt her her, right. her her subject, so she wants Benis. And she just tells them, give us Benis, and all this will go away. That's all we want. She says, I'll take him, and I'll cut his nose, and we'll let him go. But Benis refuses. Benis is like, he's kind of a douche. I ain't fucking doing that. And she says, like, she says, we're coming with fire and steel, then. We're coming to get him. Right, and then, yeah, like, the forest catches on fire, so they, like, all round up, and they go, they go towards her castle, right? Yeah, they, yeah, because... The whole forest is on fire, and they just they assume it's only Sir Eustace's fire or Eustace's um forest. So him and like, yeah, they all go towards uh, uh cold moat, Lady Weber's castle. And then like meet Lady Weber, and they like confront her about the forest fire, and she didn't do it. Yeah, she says she didn't do it, and she says she thinks that Eustace did it. Because it burned right. her forest too. Right, I forgot about that part too. Yeah, because they're like, yeah, it just it's basically like a state line, but yeah, the fire crossed both of them. So. And then what happens? Is this I'm I don't remember this part that well because I know Dunk gets in a fight, but I don't remember how. It's, uh, Lady Weber's, um, her like. The main dude, like, that protects her, but it's also, like, her next suitor. Like, he wants to marry her, this this guy. And he, he basically, they do, they basically do, like, a trial by combat. And it's it's Lady Weber's champion versus Sir Eustace's champion. Who is Dunk? Who is Dunk. And they are at the river where the dam was, and now the river's, like, very full because they're above the dam. <laughs> So yeah, they they like start fighting, and Dunk is like losing. Yeah, this dude is no joke that he's fighting against. But D Dunk just like doesn't he like pull him into the water? Yeah, and the dude has super heavy armor on. 
So well, and, and Dunk, but Dunk is really strong. Yeah. So he like gets a hold of him and he like fucking drowns him, doesn't he? Yeah, he basically pulls him down and pushes him under the water and just drowns him. Yeah. But like this whole time, Dunk is like also drowning. <laughs> yes, which leads us to him being passed out again, like, <laughs> and waking up with you know people looking over him. Which happens a lot to Dunk. It it sure does. And one thing is, like, whenever Dunk gets all messed up, Egg is always, like, right by his side and, like, won't let anybody do anything to him. Yeah, yeah. Because Egg is really wise to all the tricks and stuff that go on throughout the realm. Yeah. Because, like, when he shows up the first time at, uh, what is her name? The, 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 the spider's castle. And he's like, don't drink the wine. Because he doesn't want <laughs> Dunk to get poisoned. Yeah, because they just assume she's, she poisons everybody. Yeah. But she she explains to him like how all of her previous husbands died, and she didn't well, kill any of them. And her backstory is like that she has to get married really soon, or she's gonna lose the kingdom. Yeah, because her father put that in like his dying wishes is that she marries, you know, and basically has kids. And if she doesn't by whatever, then yeah, the castle goes away. So yeah, Dunk is passed out, right? And that's the end of that one too, I think, right? Is there more that happens there? Yeah, there is a little bit more because he wakes up and he finds out that freaking uh, Lady Weber, because that, oh, yeah, that was her right. suitor. Oh, right, I forgot about this part. Yeah, that was her suitor and now he's dead. And she before was in love with one of Sir Eustace's sons who died. And while Dunk's passed out, uh, Lady Weber and Sir Eustace basically shake hands, even though they like hated each other. And then they like start talking, and they realize they like love each other too. And yeah, they like weird. they get married like immediately, like before Duncan even wakes up. And <laughs> yeah, it's super weird. And Dunk like grabs her braid and freaking kisses her. Yeah, and he takes some of her hair as a keepsake. Right. Yep. <laughs> and I, I, that's the end of that one, right? Yeah, and they, yep, that's, that is the end of that one. Oh, I'm sorry, my phone is ringing. No, that's all right. Okay, continue, I will turn the sound off on this. So, yeah, so the next one, Dunk and Egg are, like, on their way to this this special tourney that, like, came out of nowhere of for this wedding. And so Dunk thinks that maybe it's time for him to try jousting again, and so he wants to go and joust this tournament. And win but, some money. Yeah, and win some money because he's, like, really poor. Yeah. Because one of their horses just died, right? Uh, Yeah, they had to, yep. And so, yeah, Dunk's, I mean, Dunk is riding Thunder, which is his war horse, which is, like, a special horse that he takes special care of. And yeah. and Egg is riding a mule. Yeah. <laughs> but one thing, like, even though Egg is a prince, he, like, does, he deals really well with actually being a squire, and he does a really good job for Dunk. Yeah, he's not constantly, like, reminding duncan that he's royalty and he expects duncan to treat him as if he's just a squire right which duncan does yeah and, yeah, and so they they try and because you have to take a ferry to make it to this tournament mm -hmm. and he tries to get on the ferry but there's there's so many people in town so he can't even stay at the inn and so he like ends up like on the river with some other hedge knights and he's never heard of any of them before. Yeah, and he also almost gets run down by like uh, some royal family. And one of those dudes, one of those hedge knights with that royal family talks to him. That's the... Uh, oh, you're right. The dude with like the, um, the, the fiddler, fiddler or whatever. Yeah, yep. Which he actually ends up being very important. And yeah. But even talk, like talking to these guys, like Dunk gets a sense who he can trust and who he can't trust. And this fiddler guy, like immediately, he's like, hmm, something is off with this guy. Yeah, even though that dude was like super nice to him. Right, but he's he's like, he, something is just off. Yeah, he's almost like too nice to him. <laughs> is this when they talk about the bastard too, where the guy yeah. says he has hero's blood? Yeah, he has like the fireball on his shield because right. he claims he's he's the bastard of some dude, some great knight that was the fireball or it was a, his last name is Ball. And uh, but everybody's like, you're just a bastard and you yeah. can't even prove that he was your father. You don't even know if he was your father. <laughs> but Dunk likes him 
he's actually he like he's like oh yeah he's pretty cool and there's another like the is the fox there is that who it is um the the cat the cat that's his name cat yep i knew it was an animal there's there's quite a few guys there this so this one out of all three stories i feel like is one of the hardest to follow along um yeah it gets pretty complicated there's a lot of names and some of the twists uh are kind of like i don't know they kind of come out of left field i feel like but i i i don't i didn't think so listening to it again oh i'm glad you didn't i definitely i found myself still just kind of as confused as the first time i listened so and so yeah so they end up going to the tournament and dunk like the night before the tournament starts gets like hammered drunk like super duper drunk at the feast yeah it yeah he gets wasted yeah and he and he like overhears something right when he's wasted when he's taking a piss he like hears these dudes talking about they're gonna try and steal the dragon egg yeah because the dragon egg is gonna is supposed to be the prize for the tournament winner which which is really strange like why would they be giving away a dragon egg yeah those are really precious yeah, even though there's no more dragons, the eggs are still worth a lot of money. And, you know, because normally only the Targaryens have those still. Right. But this dude has one because he was like, I can't remember why, but he has one as like a gift. Because they gave it to him because one of the Targaryens freaking had sex with all his daughters. Oh, well, there you go. That's why he has a dragon egg to give away. <laughs> yeah. And so Dunk, Dunk, like, drunkenly demands Egg sign him up for the tournament tomorrow. That's right, too. I Now, reading some of this, it brings it back. that uh, They're having a wedding is why there's a tournament. Yeah. yeah, it's the dude who's hosting the tournament is having a wedding. So that's why Dunk gets wasted at the wedding feast. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he gets super drunk, which is pretty funny. <laughs> it is kind of funny. And then he ends up being the one to carry the bride up to the room. Yeah, because he's huge. Yeah, because he, yeah, he basically like throws her over his shoulder and packs her up there. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, then uh, we come up to the next morning, and it's turn morning of the tournament or whatever. And <laughs> I love this part because Duncan's all, like, super intense. Like, he's not, like, super hungover, which I was impressed with. He's all intense and he's ready to beat this dude because the dude he's facing in the tournament has a snail on his shield. When he, and he's another hedge knight, and nobody really yeah. knows who he is. Yeah, but he thought he thinks for sure he's gonna beat the shit out of this dude with a snail on his shield. <laughs> right, and they and they go to joust. Duncan actually hits him, but the dude hits Duncan in the face. In the and just, face. And Duncan just immediately passes out. <laughs> yeah. And loses horribly. Yeah, and oh, and we forgot to mention though, like if you lose in a tournament, all your your arms, your armor, your horse, you have they the the winner takes those away from you, and you have to be yeah. able to pay for them back. Yeah, and you can ransom them, which means you'll pay him the equivalent in gold, essentially. Yeah, or the guy, Duncan, can, the guy can just keep them though, even if you have the money. Yeah, and Duncan has no money. Anyway. Yeah, well, he mentions like that he has to win at least one joust to to make it out of the tournament without losing everything. Yeah. Yeah, and he loses immediately, which I found hilarious. Well, and he he refuses to have Egg help him with money at any point. Like, he wants to do it himself. Yeah, because Aegon is constantly talking about, because he has still has a Targaryen ring, and he constantly is saying, like, we could use my boot, because he keeps his ring in his boot. Yeah, but Dunk does, never wants to use it. Yeah, he doesn't want to take the easy way. He wants to earn everything that he has, which is pretty cool. So yeah, Dunk is passed out for a couple days, right? Like the tournament goes way on. Oh yeah, he uh, yeah he's out for a while. I don't know. If, I can't remember if it's a few days, but yeah, the I think it is a few days. Yeah, the tournament is like well, like getting close to the end by the time he wakes up. Right, he wakes up and he's really hurt. <laughs> his head is he got hit in the head with a lance. Yeah, it like caved his freaking helmet in on his face. But yeah, he wakes up and. I want to say in the tournament still, the the fiddler is still in the tournament, the fireball guy is still in the tournament, and then a bunch of other like high high level guys and the snail guy. The snail the guy, tournament. the snail guy is because we yeah we find out a little bit more about that when Duncan goes to talk to that guy. So yeah, That's... Duncan Egg is still there, right? When he wakes up. 
Yeah, he's just not with him. He's he's like out at the tournament still. But yes, the doctor, I... the doctor guy says like, uh, you know, I had to basically tell him to leave. Like he wouldn't leave yeah. your side. And yeah, so then Duncan, the first thing he's concerned with is taking all of his arms and armor over to the knight. He like yeah, he like shows up and makes egg like clean all of his stuff so he can take it to him. Yep. And he takes it to him and the guy like he shows up and the guy has like a really nice tent and he has like really nice everything. Like it looks like he's like a lord on the inside, but he knows he's just a hedge knight. Right. And Dun- Duncan like gives all of it, all of his stuff and he's like, Your stuff is garbage. I don't even want it. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, and he doesn't want his horse, he doesn't want any of it. And and he explains to Dunk how he makes so much money is he like fixes the games and then bets on himself to make a bunch of money because nobody knows who he is, so the odds are bad, but he's really good. He's like amazing. Yeah. He's like an amazing jouster. Like he literally tells Duncan, he's like he's like, I'll win my next bout, but then I'll lose the one after that. Like he doesn't want to win the tournament. He he definitely doesn't want to win because that would. No, he doesn't want much. people to know who he is. Yeah, it'd give him too much clout. Well, so and he's like in really lose. drab colors when he fights, and he has like a lame snail on his shield. Yeah. It's but then, then he he says to Duncan, he's like, "I'll give you your stuff back if you come with me for the next twenty tournaments, and you let me joust you, and you lose on and purpose. And you let me beat you, yeah, because he's like, look at you, you know, he's yeah, like, who would because think Duncan's that really me- intimidating." Yeah, he's like, who would think a guy with a snail on his shield could beat you? Well, and he's like an old man. <laughs> yeah, but he's an amazing jouster. Yeah. Uh, and and so then, then Dunk obviously refuses. He's like, I, I don't want my honor to be tarnished. Like, I want to be well known as a as a good knight. And then the snail goes on to explain that he hit Dunk in the face on purpose because he was trying to kill him. He was actually trying to kill him, yeah. Because somebody paid him to kill Duncan. And yep. was fixing the matches on purpose so that Dunk faced him first. Yeah. But that guy, the snail, is fixing the game to Make also money. face who he wants. Yeah. Right, yeah. Because he's paying he's paying the dude who runs the list. So right. he makes sure he faces the right people. So this guy basically has no honor and is a dickbag. He kind of is, yeah. But it was still hilarious that Dunk was so You hyped know, up it, it was cool to me to show the like another hedge knight who's like really good at what he does yeah and just yeah he's basically has no honor but he's like a baller because of it so (laughs) yeah and then so yeah so dunk doesn't have his weapons anymore what what ends up happening after that it doesn't have like anything yeah he doesn't have any money or now he's trying to now he's trying to figure out who was trying to have him killed and why right and while this is going on, I want to say the Fireball wins another jousting match, right? And he's, like, yep. getting to be a talk of the tournament because he's actually doing really, really well. Yeah, like, it's pretty much in line to be the Fireball against the Fiddler is basically who is lining up to be the end of the tournament. And I want to say the Fireball talked to Duncan, and he's the guy that had the dream, right? Or was that the Fiddler? No, it's the uh, it's the Fiddler because, yeah. We right. Will, yeah. You're yeah right. We'll find out at the very end as to why. But like we said earlier, the video, the fiddler tells Duncan that he's like, "Oh man, you're going to be in the in the king's guard. I dreamed it, and my dreams come true." Yeah. And and then he goes back, and Egg is missing. Right? Like he can't find Egg. Can't and he find like Egg. Asks, he asks all around about him. Yeah, he's starting to panic. And then I might be skipping a little bit here, but Duncan kind of finds himself like in like a dead end corridor like with this other dude and the dude basically pulls a knife on duncan right he stabs him but Dun- doesn't duncan end up fucking killing him oh yeah duncan literally grabs his hand like with a knife in it and like punches him in the face and throws him down the well like <laughs> oh yeah that's right yeah and yeah. lets him drown he lets him drown in the well well and doesn't the guy kind of slip where egg is he says something about it yeah, because they have found out who Aegon is at the tournament. They know and, he's Aegon. And then so Dunk goes back to the snail guy, and his squire's there, and he's like, I want my weapons back. And he's like, do you have the money? And he's like, no, but I'll kill you if you don't give them to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and then, and then it just cuts to Duncan. And he's like, no, I'm well equipped, and I'll, I'm ready to save Aegon. Yeah, and so he finds Aegon. So this... 
all kind of also transpires at the same time is that they accuse the fireball of stealing the oh, that's dragon right. egg. Right. Yeah, so all of a sudden there's just a ton of shit going on at one time. Though and, they actually they find the dragon egg in his satchel. But it's not real. That's right. the thing. It's because they say it's either him or it's Duncan because Duncan had touched the egg at the wedding. That's right. When he's drunk. And, yeah, and people saw him do it. But that's why he remembers what it looks like. And he says, you know, then we should let us see the egg if it's if it's truly the one that he stole. Anyways. It's, yeah, Duncan finds Aegon. Egg. Yeah. And and he's like being kept by he's being kept by the, the guy that's putting on the wedding, right? And another guy I can't remember the other guy's name. I can't either. This that's why I said these are kinda this is where the names really get a little bit uh iffy. Oh, because he's with he's many. with the guy that saw him touch the egg. Yeah, yeah, the peop, the guys he heard talking to, I think. Right, and I and they they, they have egg, but they're like they're like not like holding on to egg. Like egg is just chilling. <laughs> so that yeah, they're not like keeping him captive. Like egg egg is like mad. Yeah, but they know who he is. Yeah, they know who he is. They were they were trying to get him on purpose. Yeah. And this is where it kind of comes out that the Fiddler is not just like a hedge knight. No, he, he is, is a Targaryen. So he's actually a Blackfire. Right. Which he's, they so he's part of the, the Black Dragon. Yeah, he is a Targaryen, but they changed their last name to Blackfire during the, during the Civil War to distinguish themselves from the other Targaryens. And... Right. He so, is, so basically what's happening at this tournament is that they are have they're starting another uprising. Yes. Yep. Yeah, that and was like the purpose of it is to get Damon Blackfire back in like a seat of power. And I want to say Dunk doesn't he fight the one guy, the guy that saw him touch the egg? Doesn't he fight him? They get into like a a skirmish kind of thing, I think, because Dunk, Dunk kills him. Yeah, he kills him, but there's like a, a – not a sizable fight, but they like kind of fight a few guys in like this church right there. Oh, right. And, but people come and help Duncan, I think. Yeah, because they already sent word off. Right. That's, that's how they figured out who Aegon was because Aegon tried to use his ring for something, and they were like oh, – Because he wanted, he wanted to use his ring to get – Duncan's they get back. Duncan's stuff back. Yeah, that's right. And so they figure out who he is. That's why well, they capture him. And Egg lies to them, and he's like, "I, I told, I told my father what's going on here. He's on his way right now." Yeah, yep. And, and so they're the like, "Oh dude, shit! The the freaking all of the king's might is coming to us right now, and we 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 like need to hurry up and do something." Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because that one guy's making fun of Dunk. He's like, you, he's like, you got hit in the head with a lance. You suck. And and Dunk freaking kills him. And he's like, I told you I was better with a sword. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's just, right. I, I just love that. And because Dunk is injured at the time too. Yep. He's yeah, because they awesome. got stabbed. So anyway, so then don't they go from there? And they they are trying freaking um, the fireball. They're they're like he's in jail. It's because and, uh, the one dude does show up. His the Egg's father does show up. No, Blood Raven shows up. His oh, dad shit. Show up. You're right. Blood, Blood Raven. Raven is the hand of the king. How, how have we not mentioned this dude? Because That's true. We oh, The whole time, gosh. basically from the second one on, Dunk talks about how... I mean, and, and, and people talk a lot of shit about the Targaryens in front of Egg, and it pisses Egg off. And basically yeah. what they're saying is Blood Raven, who's the hand of the king, and he's a bastard born, so he, he like has all these shitty connotations. He only has one eye... And his other eyes all bloodshot and gross looking. But he's the hand of the king, and supposedly he is the one that's like com he's controlling the realm. And one of the sayings that Dunk always says is, "How many eyes does the blood ra does does the raven have? One thousand and one. One thousand and one. That's right. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. So he's out. the one with a lot of clout. Yeah, and everybody's all pissed because even though the Targaryens, like the bloodline, is the true king. The king doesn't seem to do very much. So Blood right. Raven essentially does like whatever Blood Raven wants to do with everything. And, but they, 
Dunk doesn't say this, but you get the feeling that Blood Raven is kind of a dick bag. He's kind of a dick bag. He's also uh, supposedly a sorcerer and right. dabbles in magic. And it actually sounds like he's a douche, but he's a total badass. Well, like, but a lot of the time, the people that Dunk are interacting with are the, from the black side. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, he shows up and he like you know he kind of calms down the situation, but they want to get the fireball off, and so they have him joust the fiddler. That's right. Yeah. Because they do a trial by combat. Yeah, they do a trial by combat, and they figure because that's what uh, Damon Blackfire demands is that. Right. Yeah. And they also realize that when Damon when they go to fight or whatever. He doesn't have like the black fire sword like he supposedly did and all this shit. So they're like, well, and yeah. they tell you about his lineage too, how he's like whore born, and so he was like a really low status person. Yeah, yeah, they're basically like, yeah, like you're kind of a jack wagon, anyways. <laughs> and they've been they've been torturing him for like days, and so he's kind of tired. But the they tell fireball. him like, the fireball, yeah, the yeah. fireball. They they've been torturing him, and so and and they go to joust, and Dunk gives him the same advice that he got from Baylor Breakspear, and he's like, use a tournament lance so you can hit him first. Yeah. Which he does, and he yeah. uns- unhorses Damon. Yeah, he like knocks him all the way off, right? And and he's not wearing his Fiddler stuff anymore. He's wearing like his dragon his stuff. Black, yeah, his black fire stuff, yeah. So yeah, he unhorses him, and so he proves his innocence, and so he gets to, and I think he wins the tournament, basically. But the tournament yeah. was a sham anyway, so... Yeah, it was all just kind of a it was all kind of a joke anyways. And uh, like a little bit more happens. They I mean they basically set up that there's going to be more stories. Yeah, which yeah, that's that's essentially the ending of that one. And then they find out that uh the egg truly was stolen, but they're pretty sure it was like the performing dwarves yeah. at the wedding who stole it. Like <laughs> which I found hilarious cuz the well, egg, I thought I thought they, they, they made it sound like they made it sound like Blood Raven stole it. Well, the egg they found in the saddlebag was just a painted rock. Yeah. So, but just because he says he's like he's like, why wouldn't a dwarf be one of the eyes of the raven? Yeah, it makes it yeah. Sound like yeah, the Blood right. Raven stole the egg. Yeah, you're right. You know, so yeah, Blood Raven like shows up and he's actually like really cool and really helpful. Yeah, even though this whole time, yeah, we were kind of being led to think he's kind of a dick, but yeah, like, and like he ruining wasn't the that room. bad when he shows yeah. up. Yeah, he's actually really cool, and he, I mean, they they talk a little bit about like how it's not safe for Egg to be with Dunk, but Egg like refuses to leave Dunk. Like he only wants to squire for Dunk. Yeah, that's like all he wants to do. I mean, they have a pretty strong bond, which which is most of the book, and I think it's really good. Yeah, super bromance. Yeah. Well, it's like child mance. Yeah, it's kind of weird because, yeah, isn't Egg only like 12? Yeah, he's pretty young. He's 10, I think, when they start. Dunk, is Dunk isn't very old, old either. Only like he doesn't 20. even know how old he is. Yeah, he's pretty sure he's about 20. Yeah, but he doesn't really know. All right, I think we kind of covered everything I wanted to talk about. I hope so because I didn't even think we were going to talk about this one that long. But I yeah, told you, it's, it's good. It is good though, for sure. And yeah, he definitely sets it up like, like at the very end, the there's like a little excerpt that basically says, you know, what kind of like the end of like an old school cartoon, like what will Egg and Dunk do next? Like yeah, he says, there's more stories. Yeah. <laughs> Which there, I okay, I want to actually see if there is another one because it's it's good. It leaves you, it definitely left me wanting more. Yeah, I hope there is because I I like this one and I especially like this book in contrast to um a Game of Thrones actually. Oh, okay. Okay, so actually The Night of the Seven Kingdoms is actually a collection of three books which start with The Hedge Knight, the next one is The Sword, The The Sworn Sword and the last one is The Mystery Knight. So yeah, they they used to be three separate books. Oh, it but, was three separate books. Okay. Yeah, and then it got put into one. Oh, I see that now, too. And The Hedge Knight was actually written back in 1998. Yeah. So it was actually a pretty old story. 
But I, can't I hope see more. to find oh. another one. Oh my gosh! I looked it up recently after I finished this the second time. I looked it up just because I was, I was really hoping there was another one. It is really good. I know if George R. R. Martin could, if, if he would at least have the books up to the TV show, like what the heck? Well, that wasn't all his fault, but we'll probably cover That's that. That's true. We would like to eventually cover the daunting task of Game of Thrones. So, but that is that is far in the future, and those episodes are probably going to have to be broken down. If we do them like this, where we talk about everything that happens, we'll probably have to break them down into multiple episodes because they're so damn long. Oh, yeah. And the names are going to get confused. Oh, gosh. Hell. Yeah, just like in this, I apologize for that. We we totally botched that right off the bat. <laughs> True. But like, like I said before, we don't necessarily just want this to be us reading you a summary because you can go do that yourself and we're well aware of that we're mostly just wanting to kind of hit our highlights and the stuff that stood out to us and the reasons that we like the book or dislike the book yeah and i think we pretty much covered that in this one yeah i mean i just we got to talk about so please go to our facebook page oh yeah this is the pages library and the twitter which is also at Knights of the Pages Library. And what's the email again? You could be the first email we get. Oh, that's true. <laughs> the email is kotpl.pod at gmail.com. We're also yeah. up on uh, YouTube. I still only have the first episode up because I suck. But that's we're also all, over okay. there. It's all good. So if you... If you choose to get some of your listening goodness that way, uh, I will be uploading all these episodes to there as well. Go over there and and yeah. like and comment and subscribe. And, and before we forget, we got to mention the book that we're doing next. Oh, yes. Let's do that. Which the next step. So, so what we're going to keep trying to do, and I guess if you guys want to be the first email, you can tell us how you feel about this. We're going to try and do like a shorter book and then a longer book. And we're going to try and alternate back and forth. Yeah, and we've and been trying to upload on Thursdays too. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but that's just what we've been trying to do. It might not always be that way, but yeah, we're, we're trying to do that right now. Yeah, that's that's the plan is to try to keep uploading about every Thursday. And that that I feel like too, if we do a shorter book and a longer book, we kind of just felt like that gives you a little more time to maybe like two weeks to finish that longer book if you wanted to listen to it before we discuss it. Um, Why don't we mention? the next long book we want to do too then yeah which well okay so next week we are doing the adventures of tom stranger interdimensional insurance agent which is an auto it's it's only available on audible it's not an audible original and it's by larry korea who is mm -hmm. the guy that wrote monster hunter which yeah if you haven't listened to that episode go listen to that and hear our praise for that book so so yeah, so that's gonna be it's it's only like two hours long, so it's gonna be a shorter episode for sure. Right. So let's do this dark endeavor after that. Yes, let's let's do this dark endeavor. So that'll be the that'll be it'll uh, be the next two long weeks book. from this episode. Right. Yes, this dark endeavor by Kenneth Opal. And I want to thank everybody that has been listening. It seems like as soon as we got on iTunes, you guys like doubled everything that we had before, which is really cool. And I really appreciate it that you taking the time to even listen to it or, or even click on it. I don't care if you just click on it and play it for a second. It's, you tried. And I still really appreciate all the, the support we've been getting. I agree, too. And if anybody's here at the, the end of this episode with us still, then again, yeah, much appreciation. We, uh, we just we do this for fun because you know we we were gonna pretty much talk about this stuff anyways together so we threw up some recording stuff and try to give this a shot and I'm actually amazed at the you know not necessarily the full response but even just getting listens I mean <laughs> and I would really appreciate our first piece of hate mail please I'll re I'm I'm gonna read it too. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll be looking forward to that, too. Oh, I think that's it. I think we got it all. 
I think that wraps it up. So, yeah, we will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.